We talk about food. We talk about music with musical dudes. Finger on the pulse, snacky tunes. One, two, three, and. Looking for hope in a hopeless world. Searching for love in such hateful times Looking for hope in a hopeless world Try and ease my mind Ease my mind A baby's born in New York City Wrapped in a blanket that's tattered and worn Mama's doing the best she can Finding hope in a hopeless world Her eldest son stayed in school Listen to mama, didn't drink or use But uh, every job he wants he gets refused It takes hope in a hopeless world Looking for hope in a hopeless world Searching for love in such hateful times Looking for hope in a hopeless world Try and ease my mind Ease my mind On the corner stands a young girl The home she left was from the better part of town Her daddy did things she can't talk about is there hope in a hopeless world? Oh, you gotta call for a homeless man. Spare some change for a soldier who fought the war. Put some money in those hats and those tins. Give them hope in a hopeless world. Looking for hope in a hopeless world. Searching for love in such hateful times Trying to stay strong while my mind gets weak Looking for hope in a hopeless world oh, 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 oh. You gotta listen to the voice inside you That speaks of love Don't compromise Realize Time's passing by there are mountains to climb You can't be standing You can't be standing still No, no, no No, 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 no Take a moment together in unity the golden rule for all humanity I'm gonna say it again the golden rule for all humanity why is it so hard the golden rule for all humanity teach us hope in a hopeless world oh looking for hope in a hopeless world <laughs> searching for love in such hateful times Looking for hope in a hopeless world Try and ease my mind Ease my mind Gotta find love in a hopeless world Gotta find it Oh, Gotta find love in hateful times Gotta find it Oh, Gotta find love and free your mind Free my mind Free my mind Free my mind Free my mind Gotta find love Gotta find it, gotta find it But free my mind, free our minds, free our minds Yes, there's hope In a hopeless 
in a hopeless world. Awesome. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. I'm half your host. Uh, Terry Diabolic looking at uh, DJ Never Forget. Feels good to be back. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you. It was, uh, I'm full of breakfast tacos. Oh, you were in Austin. I was in Austin. Okay. Uh, that was just Mark Vetri and Phil Roy uh, playing live Snacky Tunes. Welcome to Snacky Tunes, guys. Hey, guys. How you doing? Nice to be here. Uh, and the name of that song was? Hope in a Hopeless World. Fantastic. So, all right. So, normally, we just do a, a, a straight food piece at the top of the show. But, uh, Mark, when you put your uh, latest cooking uh, book out, you did a, a performance with Phil yes. um, about a month ago, right? Sure, sure. So why don't you – how about in, this? In New York City. In New York yeah. City. Tell us a little bit about the cookbook, and then we'll get into how you two met. Rustic Italian Food. Um, this is my, my, um, my second book. Um, and, you know, this one's the more, the, the, the more user book. You know, you're, you're going to use this, you know, to – to make stuff in the the home and everything like that. Uh, the original one, the, the 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 first one was more like the restaurant book, right, right, right. Um, you know, and this one's more like you know, you're 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 using this thing. Now, is there is there like a, a practice in putting out like here's the restaurant book because you've eaten here for, and then is this well, the cookbook like you really wanted to put yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. You know how you know how it is when when you want to write a book. Um, everyone's like, well, you, you know, you have to. You know, you have the the, the well known the the, the, the restaurant vetri and uh, and everyone was like, well, you have to write the recipes, you know, right out of the the restaurant. Even though I was like, you know, I just I just want to make a little bit, uh, you know, uh, you know, something just a little bit easier. Um, but, but everybody wanted the uh, the the the, the vetri, you know, restaurant book. So um, so I had to go with that. Right. For the first one, um, and isn't it sort of? I, I don't want to say ironic, but do you find that? Very I, I feel like most people <laughs> like look at the first cookbook, and like, oh my god, this is beautiful because this is the food that I sure. ate, and this is how I made it. But then they're like, well, if I'm actually, I'm not going to actually be able to do all this at home. So, do you have a book that you I can know? Cook yeah, there's there was there was a lot of items that you you were you you were still able you know to uh, to make. I think um, you know. I mean, even though there's uh, the, the that's a very sort of uh, to, to refined restaurant, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. you know, we're still we're still all about sort of you know sort of like a really really simple food, um, you know. So there was, I think, still lots of items there that uh, that 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 that, uh, that um, you know that they were able to make, you know. Yeah, you just made the onion the the other night, Phil Roy. Onion fondue. Onion, onion fondue. Onion, uh, onion crepe. Uh, onion crepe with a you know? um, truffle fondue, Parmesan. Five-hour onions. Five-hour onions. Five-hour, you know? five hour, six five hours. hours you know? Cooking them down slow. Uh, yeah, what, what is the five-hour technique? I know you have 10 <laughs> For a technique? Yeah. It's not much of a technique. <laughs> Stick it on low and just kind of leave it there. You don't and touch then, it? Don't move it? No. Nah, you know, you, you mix what? it every now and then. You mix it every now and then. You don't have to. A little bit of salt, uh, a little bit of olive oil. But then, you know, they 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 go from white to yellowish to to brown to like to like sticky sticky yeah. you know now phil you uh you guys mark you guys are both from philadelphia right yeah yeah now phil you had a music event you're a musician sure. critically acclaimed people everyone from ray charles joe cocker recorded your songs and you've toured the world, and then you decided to take the tour off the road into your house, right? It's called the I'm Not Leaving the House Tour. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I, I came up with an idea where... You left the house for here, though. Yeah, I left the house. No, <laughs> this was, was, this was, was when I was in Philadelphia, in between, like, record deals, just, like, thinking, like, what can I do different? Um, you know, everyone's trying to pretty much swim up the same stream, like mm-hmm. salmon, play the same clubs, do the same thing. And I really loved cooking a lot, and... Uh, I was going to do it once, just for. I sent an email out. Mm-hmm. Hey, I got 14 seats. It's 100 bucks a person. You want to come to my house? And it was sold out in like less than an hour. That's crazy. So it was. It was. Um, and you cooked. And I cooked. Yeah. Okay. So then it, it morphed into like. Do you remember your first menu? Uh, you know what? I figured that I, I did like a couscous royale. Okay. Something. I, so something, I, something. Salmon gravlax. Though something, it had to have salmon gravlax. And the sa- and the gravlax. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I do. I which did, I use. You know. Mark, were I, you were you there at the first dinner? No, 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 no. 
No, we met a little bit after that. We met a little bit, a little bit after that, and the Philadelphia Inquirer was like, what's this guy doing right. uh, in his house? And it was a pretty big story, and people picked it up, uh, you know, the local NPR affiliate in Philly, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Inquirer, and it just cre- it just came onto a life of its own. And, and five years later, six, almost six years now, I'm still... This is still part of my life doing these dinners. I was I cooked one of Mark's recipes for twenty people uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. No, it's 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 no longer called. I'm not leaving the house. It's sounds good. Tasting, <laughs> it sounds good because you know if you come to my house now, I, you guys can come over. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's about it. I live in New York now, so. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I had a, I had a big place in Philly. I could seat thirty. Oh man, those Amazing. those Philly houses are. They're awesome. You go, you don't find those here. Yeah, different thing. Yeah, different thing. Awesome or you house. find them here for a lot. A yeah, lot, a lot uh, we got the nice brownstone. It's yeah, a right. couple more well, zeros. So then, how did you, did you hear about these dinners? Or how did he you hear actually? About the you know what? He actually ate at the, the the restaurant, and then, you know, we just had like this this instant this instant sort of like liking for for one another you our know. eyes just our met. eyes just met, met and we're like <laughs> wow who are you um, who are you and so so i actually went to 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 one of his to to one of his things once and then i actually mentioned you know i was like listen you know you're you, you're you're working hard man <laughs> Right? Yeah. 30 it's a, folks it's a, there. It's like at, it's a at lot of four food. courses. That's and a, you're playing. So. And I'm playing. It was crazy. In between the first three courses and dessert, I would basically go up to my room, my bedroom, and lie down and just go, oh, Have a little, can I do this? Can I do this? Get through it. You know, because it's, it's, it's if it's 25 way. people, that's a, I've just done 75 plates. Of oh, yeah. Oh, a yeah. Sit down. It's a lot of food. In yeah. a small little kitchen. No, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, I did it and... Uh, you know, Mark actually came to the dinner where the Martin Guitar Company, yeah. Chris Martin the Fourth, who is the, right. he came with his executive staff. Yeah, and Mark uh, plays a Martin guitar, and I'm like, this is why don't you come? And so we hung I, out then. Yeah, we hung out, and then and then I, you know, I offered him, you know, it's you, um, um, so at the 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 um, the, um, the the Osteria that 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 we have, we have this uh, this 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 wine room there. Um, you know, holds about thirty seats. You know, so I offered up. You know, why don't you have an evening there? You know, we'll make the the the, the menu there, so you don't have to sit there and like Beautiful. work your. Dude, your I rest just off, eat, You know, I eat. You and sit down hang with out. everybody. You know, yeah. you eat, and then afterwards and then you do a thirty minute. You know, and and that's when that's when the, that's when um, that's when he actually mentioned. Well, why don't why don't you also you know. You, why don't why, why don't you also sit in with me? You know. So then I so I used to so I used to sit in for what like one song or like one or two maybe songs. another song. And now he sits in for the whole set. And then we started learning all of the other songs, and uh, you and know we, we went on tour together in Chicago and Boston. And yeah, awesome. plays with nice theaters. For Melody Gardell. You must have ate very well on the road. You must we have eat. You know, that's you the one not- thing for uh, for for me. Um, wherever we go. You know somebody no, who's got course, a restaurant. Which is usually the exact opposite of the touring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I go out with Mark, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, it is like the doors of culinary oh, Casbah <laughs> opens. I mean, his, people love him so much. His chef friends from all over the, the, the country, they just want to feed him, and I'm just with him. It's like, hey, yeah, hey, I get to eat, eat too. Yeah, we yeah, eat well. Great. We eat very well. We well, let's, well. Uh, let's hear another song. Nice. Sure. What do you got? What do you want to play? I uh, wrote a wrote a tune with Madeline Peru, uh, who's like a you know kind of jazzy, blues, uh, you know people know who she is around here. Brooklynite. Actually, I wrote the song in Brooklyn, uh, you know, a few years ago, with Madeline. It's called Exceptionally Ordinary. Little blues thing. All the pigeons are cooing outside my front door. I never heard them sound so pretty before. The neighbor's baby's crying, it's time to be fed. The morning light's calling, get yourself out of bed. There's poetry to see, in the exceptionally ordinary. Well, I stumbled to the sink, 
Let the water splash my eyes I glance out the window Look at that war women sky That old man is walking hand in hand with his wife And I'm just a witness To the glories of life There's poetry to see In the exceptionally ordinary yeah. Oh the sun Turns light in the shadows The sound of a bird's simple song The smell of spring and its flowers My baby waiting there for me When I get home now Who needs fancy eating When you got rice and beans A simple glass of water Short taste sweet There's poetry to see In the exception of the ordinary Yeah, take it Turns light in the shadows, the sound, the sound of a bird's simple song. The smell of spring and its flowers, my baby waiting there for me when I get home. Now most people, they don't notice what's good in this life. It ain't the love of money or the stuff that it buys. You won't find it in a star shelf or in a catalog of things. It's friendships, relationships, and family. There's poetry to see. Exceptionally ordinary I know it, yeah There's poetry to see Exceptionally ordinary Yeah, I know it, I know it, yeah There's poetry to see In the exceptionally ordinary Big ending with two big, guitars. Big finish. Cool. Big finish. So, big Mark, finish. you... Uh, big finish, big finish. Big finish. <laughs> you've got uh, three restaurants open up in Philadelphia right now. Sure. sure. And um, what sort of music do you play at the restaurants? Does each one have a different vibe? Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, you know, the... The, 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 uh, the, the the Vetri restaurant has like uh, you know sort of actually we we have a lot of uh, we we have a lot of your music playing Phil. Um, I like it. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of light uh, some some blues, um, some 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 some, uh, some some softer things going. At the 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 Osteria, we have all uh, uh, this, this 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 rock and roll from from um, from from Italy. Um, it's really wild. How did you uh, get that, that playlist together? Rock and yeah. roll? You know, yeah. It's like uh, the, um, the guys like um, Nomadi and uh, Zucchero and uh, and um, uh, what's the other guy's name? Giovanotti. It's just like everyone's like, what is this stuff? And then they listen and uh, it's, it's, um, it's um, you know, so... So it's actually really, uh, re- really wild. Um, and then at the the other restaurant at um, at, um, at Amis, we have just like normal, uh, uh, some, uh, some 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 rock and roll playing. Um, a, lot you know, of, a lot of rock Led and roll. Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Aerosmith. Not your standard uh, like mandolin classic. No, 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 no. That's that's that, that's going to be at uh, the the the, the Vetri restaurant, the Mothership. The Mothership has all the you Classic know, those little, yeah, sure. The the nuances, uh, the, the the relaxed atmosphere. The other ones you want to really, uh, you know, have a little fun. Yeah, I mean, Phil- oh, I mean, and it's loud too. I mean, Philadelphia's I mean, a loud, fun party. I mean, the Philadelphia scene as a whole in the last ten or fifteen years, it's fun. Has really grown up a lot, a, a lot. lot. I think, yeah. See, see, I opened, um, I opened up Vetri in uh, nineteen ninety eight, um, mm-hmm. and there was like. Nothing. I mean, we, yeah. But there was like three restaurants there, you know. I mean, it was Lebec Finn. Lebec Finn. Uh, the, the, the bass. The, mm-hmm. the, the, the striped bass. The striped bass. And, you know, that was it. There was there was a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but there wasn't a whole lot of stuff there. I um, mean, growing up. It exploded. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the last few. Yeah. has done a whole bunch of stuff, uh, you know. 
What do you think? Yeah, Steven what do you think's Star. been the um, the impetus for the explosion in Philadelphia culinary scene? Well, you know, it's just uh, you know, Stephen Starr started opening up. You know, um, lots of restaurants. Mm-hmm. He 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 actually uh, spawned off a lot of guys. Uh, um, the, the, the the you you got um you got also. You, you got also Jose there. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got what six or seven restaurants Amada, now. That new Mexican one. Uh, Distrito. Yeah. And, Distrito. Um, you got Michael. You, you got Michael Salamanov. He used to work for for for, uh, for me. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got Zahav. Um, but there's a lot of restaurants. I don't know. It's just you know, I what 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 may have actually happened is you know the 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 the, the New York scene you know. Started. I mean, it's a lot. It, it's a lot of money to open up a restaurant here. You know, mm-hmm. you, you know. I was actually working here, and um, and and when I was looking to, to open up something, I I was obviously looking to to, to to stay here. And um, man, it was just a lot of money, a lot of money. So I was, you know, so I so I so I actually started looking back home. We uh, uh we uh like talk about other dining scenes like the Portland scene, San Francisco. Do you think that like France got it? Um, really cool scene too. Yeah, all of them amazing, oh. but a lot of it has to do with because it's so much cheaper. Do you think people can take more risks in Philadelphia than they can yeah. here? Or do you think it's just as competitive when you're opening at the restaurants? I, I think you know what you 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 still have to you know have it all figured out. Nowadays, you're not going to open up something and you know the the the, the food's good, but the the rest of it isn't. The ambiance is nice, but the, but the food's not. Um, you have to have it all, and and you also have to know. I think you you have to you have to know what the restaurant's all about. That's you know that's that's a big thing. A lot of you know guys open up a restaurant, and you know, and they 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 say that they're like the 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 the, the neighborhood the the neighborhood restaurant. But they're not, and then, and then you know, nobody really you know knows what what they're all about, and then no one ends up eating there. You, I mean, you still really have to nail it now. Yeah, I mean, especially now when people are eating out less. If, if you, you don't, you, they're, you get they're, one shot. they're not going to come. Yeah, you, you go. got one yeah. shot. Yeah, you know? that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. You know, you could put a CD on repeat, but uh, it's Eminem, man. One shot. That's a song, right? One shot. <laughs> one shot. Right. He says a couple other things. He says a couple, <laughs> he says a couple other things. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he sings mostly about food related. Food related things. things. Um. Yeah. You know. You. You just have to. I mean. You. You know. Years ago. You, you were able. To, you know. To, to open up a restaurant. And it was all right, but there was nothing else around, so so everyone ate there anyway. Mm-hmm. But those are all out here. All of those those the those old Philadelphia. You know the. Restaurants like uh, what's it called? Uh, Ralph's. No, well, well, that still does well because it's. Uh, well, that wasn't a good. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> the, is, the, is the book Le- binders, you know. So oh yeah. Much, you know, like is Lebec Finn still around? Lebec Finn still around? Yeah. That was that was the you know growing that up. was it. that was it like that when, was when it. we heard Lebec Finn or I guess Four Seasons. Four it was seasons. like it was like that was it. That's it. That, Lebec Finn was on some plateau, way above yeah, yeah. everything else. I've still never been. Yeah. yeah, I was there actually uh, last last but last uh, last year. It was awesome. Yeah, they still do that whole like saber, champagne thing every now and when yeah. when he's in the mood to. Yeah. <laughs> so would you say? I mean, Philadelphia food music scene, a lot of crossover there. Is it just you two guys meeting it up down there? I don't know if there's a whole lot of. Nothing I, else going know, on. I, 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 mean, I think yeah. we're it, dude. I think, we're I think sort it's of me like, and you. Um, we're the only ones who do. Forge in the path here. There's yeah. not a lot. I, I think that every it's two things that everyone loves: food and music. And I heard about your show. <laughs> you know, it's like dinner with the band, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was very. In fact, I That's heard about that thing. in Philadelphia, and I was like, I know about this. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's like yeah. So the, the I think it's two things that are really important in people's lives. Like, they love food and they love music. Yeah. yeah. And, we've and so put them together is like, it's like a no-brainer. I don't think that... Um, when I was growing up, there was, like, supper club. You know, more food and music, yeah. actually. There's a supper club this kind of, This place yeah. called the uh, Latin Casino in 
Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Well, I feel like it used you to know? be like you would go to dinner and have a dinner party, and then someone would hop on the piano or play like an accordion or sing. Like yeah. I feel well, like that's old tradition. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah, but but that's know, not this. But this is but but this is actually an Sorry. extension of what I lived in L.A. for twenty years. <laughs> Most of my time was spent in L.A. This whole thing is an extension of getting people together and having dinner and playing music yeah. of those times of just hanging out with friends yeah. and someone grabs instruments. Yeah, yeah. we just actually we we did one of these out there. Uh, last, last last week, week. yeah, in LA, yeah. In LA? Uh-huh. Are you guys doing any more? Now I know you have some more dinners coming up for the book. Yeah, but gonna, those aren't like you're those not aren't tour. Like a, I mean, um, we're gonna do one he's here, not one the house. there. He's, he said it. We're gonna he's do not, one uh, or two right. here, you know, here and there. Um, it's great. It's kind of set. I think you, maybe it, in New yeah. York at Jonathan Waxman's place. Yeah, we'll, we may we do might it play there. a few tunes. Yeah, so, might rip, rip out a few. A barbudo. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, he's cooking. I'll come down. It's easy. It's yeah. fun. It's. I mean, that was. It was a lot of. You know, you go to enough press things where you. You know, that's why it was yours. Fun. It was a lot sure. of fun. It was like, oh, great. Like, it's not just like here we're gonna show. It's like no, we're sure, gonna actually you know, entertain. Who wants and, to, you know, who wants to hear another? You know. Story about where I worked and all this. Well, stuff. You know, you want to hear some music. Don't, don't you know, hold on. Don't you know. put yourself down. He <laughs> wants to hear. You, you make a lot and of I amazing shot music. The, uh, the 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 animals when I lived in Italy. And, you know, come on. You might have told those music. stories a bunch of times, but it's still new to us. <laughs> but this know, is this is a great. The, this is. A, I mean, you two are literally the embodiment of this radio show. Yeah. So thanks. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Are. So we're thanks. walking snacky around too. We're, 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 we're just you're snacking. Sounds good. Tastes good. You, I'm snacking. You're tunes. <laughs> you are snacking. I'm tunes, dude. Um, so like. We're gonna have you do one more song. Uh, Phil Roy, just philroy.com for all information. Yeah. And Mark, is there? What's the website? The, the, um, the, the, the website's actually Vetri Family. Vetri Family, and that's uh, V E T R I Family dot com. And both books are out now. Ten Speed Press, awesome. Holiday Rustic gifts. Italian food. Rustic Italian food. We'll probably have you sign one for our mom. Sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was, I was with my mom. She made turkey necks last night. She said, if I don't say hi, and that she's a fan. Oh, yeah? She's a big fan. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, where do you live in Philadelphia? Uh, Ballacanwood. In Ballacanwood. That's yeah. where my brother lives. Oh, okay. Yeah, like right go. on the. Like we see, can see. Um, all the, the downtown still, still not a great dining scene about no. Yeah. No. They, they got Jaime's no you know Mur- they, uh, and Murray's Murray's, oh, Murray's oh, Deli we, we can do this off yeah. we can do this <laughs> off <laughs> air <laughs> we can do Jaime's versus Murray's Marco off Polo's air Marco Polo Marco Polo Marco Polo is not bad no. Marco Polo is that Bella Kenwood no, no. Oh, it's, it's not it's, it's not, not much it's, it's a it's fine. I know. It's Bala Pizza anyway so what are you going to take us out on last song a song called Melt awesome Mike's in here. Yeah, I got up on this. Whoops. Oh, okay. Guitars. Guitars. All right, Morse code. Give me a little Morse code, Mr. Vetri, Chef Vetri. so alive it makes me numb I could survive but I don't want to you're the ruby and I'm the lead feeling heavy am I dead but last night I had a dream I saved a life I proved my love took the bullet I killed a shark I kissed your hand I thawed your heart I thawed your heart You're not around I'm lost It seems all I do anymore is hit the song And at the end of another glass Is a drop of gin And I'm sinking But last night I had a dream I've saved your life 
I proved my love I took the bullet I killed a shark I kicked some ass I won your heart I won your heart Do you want to? You do want to Cause I want you Cause I need you Do you want to? Say you want Cause I want you Cause I need you to I need you Oh baby I need you now I need you now I need you baby now Need you Need you Last night I, I had a dream I saved your life I proved my love I took the bullet I killed a shark I healed your wounds I thawed your heart I thawed your heart You melted in my arms. You melted in my arms. You melted in my arms. Yeah. <laughs> Loads of people here. Applause. Applause comes in. <laughs>
Welcome back to Snacky Tunes. Uh, that was great. That was that was really good. But as you know, we always have a musical guest as well. And today, so then the show's over. Yeah, the show's over. Thank Sorry, you all dude. for being here. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks. You've been great. Hey, uh, so well. on today's episode, we have Daedalus. Yes, thank you so much for having me out. And that uh, was really fantastic. Yeah, it's such a double threat kind of idea. Such a fantastic mix. I, not I, gu- I guess once you're good at things with your hands, you're just good at things with your hands and, and precision. I, I wish it was that way. You know I think the world would be so much of a better place if somebody was good at one thing and that would automatically make them good at something Are you else. not good in the kitchen? I'm not going to say anything. Oh, okay. Is, is that... Okay. S- no? No, no, no. Not, not terribly. I mean, I love tasting and I, I'm living in Los Angeles. That's where I'm coming from all the way out here in NYC. And, um, and there is so much good food that I think I'm just tempted to never be in my kitchen to be honest that's fair that's fair by the way sh- i gotta say shout out to lior for putting us together who's a, who's yes. great can i say something when awesome. i was in austin i didn't cook once there was just too much good food and it's so so cheap like taco meals 
Come on, don't give me that look. I'm not. Talk about talk about truck culture, though. I mean, like L.A. has yeah. a wonderful thing, and it's. I mean, they sort of kicked off the whole truck culture in America, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, it's like it it has its. It wasn't necessarily refined when it first came out. I mean, you had your true taco trucks, mm-hmm. and then now you're seeing reflection, and then they're all individually. Like Austin is really a different idea of of that truck culture, but yeah, truck culture in Austin is is actually more just like trailer park. Yeah, they don't really have. Tr- I mean, they have a few trucks, but they're more. I've had some pecan pilots, like some tiny pecan pies there, and that I've, I think I died. I think I went to some small heaven. I, it's amazing. Um, for the handful of listeners that don't know who you are, why don't you just give them a little bit of background? Sure. I'm an electronic musician, generally, um, coming from a pretty diverse background in, in jazz and classical music, but uh, found my way to electronics being a lot of freedom there. And I am based out of Los Angeles, but um, I'm, I'm happy to say that I, I get a chance to tour a little bit. I just was here this weekend playing at uh, Brooklyn Electronic Music Festival and the In N Out Festival, and uh, just had a grand time. New York's always such a fun town. Kids just kind of go. What's weird. the uh, In N Out Festival? In N Out Festival was kind of dealing with experimental interfaces. I'm using a machine called a monome, which is experimental enough, but you know, really, a lot of electronic music that you see is all based and bound around laptops and stuff, and. That's kind of a boring place, so um, I'm kind of happy that I'm using machinery that helps me break away from that. Not that your listeners can see any of it. No, but, <laughs> no, but, but it's, it's a pretty. You, you can get it verified. Okay, but we're verified by the two of us. Thank like no, we're like musical notaries on this show. Perfect. We swear it's not just like a. No, it's it's. Do you want to describe what it looks like? Sure. It's it's a grid of 256 buttons on the larger one and 64 on the smaller. They light up, and it allows me to manipulate samples and melodic information at my whim. But that's at its best. So at its worst, like, I'm just do like... Do you have 250 <laughs> samples on there? No, it's like each line is a sample. And as you press any point in that line, it'll be that point in the sample. So you can really make new melodies, uh, new rhythms. My brain just got... It's like, but it's I like, understand. Hey, I mean, you guys are talking about food. And I bet you it makes your listeners extremely agitated at times to hear all the good things and not be able to taste it directly. True. Well, most of the time we just talk about pizza. <laughs> and I swear, if you've been listening to us... <laughs> And you live in the New York area and you haven't made it to Roberta's by now, mm. shame on you. Yeah. Can it we is, say shame? But so what was the analogy you were making to your samples? Just saying that basically it's, uh, it's an experience that you can hopefully taste a little bit in your ears as long as it's on the radio. But in terms of this being at a performance, it, it is a wholly different thing. And so, you know, hopefully people take the time to go and witness some live music and kind of get that thing going just like they're going out to restaurants, I'm sure. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I, you know, what I was excited about this uh, interview is before, because when you and I were talking before about different things, you have a wide number of opinions, especially uh, on food, which is, which is perfect. And more importantly, one of my favorite things, coffee. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so, I mean, we, I mean, we have coffee here. We have mm-hmm. our favorite place, Blue Bottle. But you've obviously toured the world and had tons of different coffee. Where is your favorite coffee from to start? Well, I mean, I, I am I am fully bound and tied to my Los Angeles local, which is at Intelligentsia. Um, Love it. Yeah, I mean, they really do it Love right. It. They have a nice diversity of single origin, and and their um, their sugar glider, their new offering in terms of their blend is just beautiful. And basically, those of you who aren't familiar necessarily with coffee culture, it, it can be a bit of an intimidating place because you have people talking about you know the bitters and the fronts and the backs of things and you know it's just like, like wine, wine culture yeah. exactly and you're you're talking about varietals that have been going on for sometimes hundreds if not thousands of years and basically it's all just about a wonderful taste and a great pool and in that way i, can't, you, I can't remember was it this article came out about danish light ro- light roasted coffee it's like super light roasted like mm-hmm. super like and they say that you can over roast bad beans to sort of massive flavor, but with well, light what, roasting, that's what Starbucks does. They they just hit their they whack their beans with so Whoosh. much, so much heat that basically you can't really go wrong, but you can't taste good. You right. can't. It tastes you, burnt. It it really is coffee that's been that attained a burned so that it can take milk and sugar really well. So basically, you can add as much milk and sugar, and it still tastes like some sort it of. It tastes thing. like the idea of coffee. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right. you have you have in your mind you have this idea. It's a good name for uh, for a blog. The idea of coffee? Yeah. That's, that's free. No, oh, okay. that's Thank free. you. Thank you very that's much. Free. I have thought about trying to detail some of these. I have done some coffee tourism, going to places like Vietnam, having Civet Cat Coffee. I do not recommend Civet Cat Coffee. Are you guys what familiar? Is that? Oh, is that the poop coffee? That is the poop coffee. I, ha- I actually yeah. have a bag of it under my bed and mm. like the little brewer thing oh, okay. that a friend gave to me and it's still like, I just never, I'm sure it's fine because we've had argan oil, which is poop oil. Yeah. It's the same thing. <laughs> You know, it's 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 a novel concept, and sure, probably at one point it was something that really happened in the world. But I think nowadays it's probably forced, forced, yeah. But you know, people still eat pate. I you mean, don't uh, you don't want to force poop? 
because that just hmm. causes all types of problems. Just a whole a whole factory of, of monkeys eating beans. And anyway, uh, let's hear some music. Yeah, okay. so, so we're going to do today a little bit differently. We're going to give um, Daedalus about a 10, 12-minute window just to let let it fly. Let, let it happen. And then we're going to do a more concising uh, towards the end. But concising? We, Concising, concise thing. Okay. Thing. Uh, even more yeah, it seems yeah, concise uh, thing. So, um, let's say Daedalus Live on Snacky Tunes Radio.
Awesome. That's uh that's really wild. Oh fantastic. That's yeah, that's I, I <laughs> this like there's a handful of times where you wish that there was like a camera in here as you could see that, but um that was really that was really amazing. Thanks. So, uh, you, so you program each line. It's a little different. It's like each each uh, sample is just kind of little snippets that I've taken. Mm-hmm. And then on the fly I'm just kind of removing and, and changing things kinda today I have to admit, like middle of the afternoon on Monday, it's kinda hard to necessarily get like a specific vibe but the food in here is very evocative uh, i mean that often is the case like i'm i'm only in places for very short periods of time you know i'm in, maybe in a country for like five hours or something unfortunately right. like i mean it's beautiful to tour but a painful experience when you're in some storied land and you're basically you know you're gonna be there seeing the inside of a club inside of a hotel a car you know in some yeah exactly in some in some order you're just doing these same three or four things um yeah and like, so oftentimes yeah. it's the meal you have that that informs what you do you know, as much uh, as an audience. You know, we had talked about before where you get these machines made. It's mm-hmm. a, a sustainable farm. How do you feel that factors into like modern touring? Like how as mm-hmm. like a single artist that you can be practice sustainability when it is like, you know, your carbon footprint is huge. It's tough. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about flights and, and tour buses. Mm-hmm. Those are not so kind. And also just at almost every venue, you know, your ride or your, your, your hospitality ride or what they call it, you know, it'll be like 24 plastic bottles. Yeah. It's like giant thing of chips and hummus and all this stuff. And you're likely to take a bite of each. Most right. musicians I know, they take like a single slice and then everything's going to be trash. Right. right. I mean, that in itself isn't the best situation. I mean, obviously musicians need their comfort zones or whatever that might be. I, I try to fight that generally just by having as minimal needs as possible. And, and then hopefully, you know, when it's possible to put something like a local prepared meal, be it something made at the venue or made by the promoter or, or when, it's, when it's right, you can go out to an actual restaurant and, and yeah. do it. You know, there's a lot of cities that are turned on now to sustainability and a lot of restaurants that are, are playing that into into it so if you just have a little bit of knowledge a little bit of interneting you can probably find a place even if it is like 30 minutes from the venue or whatever and, and yeah, but you there. usually have 30 minutes exactly you know usually the sound check goes on for you know you take a few minutes you make sure the sound's right and then you can break out and like, try to do wow. something <laughs> do you feel like the promoters are more agreeable to that now like they're moving towards that and they understand it's like a part of the comfort and setting the stage for a good performance yeah, absolutely and you know you find more and more often that the actual venues are, are tuned into it as well i mean you're talking about venues are most time a very localized event you know between the promotion and the actual act of going to a venue it's like a very i mean so you don't always see local food but you always see like microbreweries and and, and kind of that the tip of the knot i mean alcohol goes very well with venues and that's how a lot of venues make their money anyway so right. you're seeing moments like that you get a home cooked meal in europe at venues. I, almost every show you play in europe there's going to be somebody who's actually like looking out to make sure your your living your lifestyle is good america's very behind the times on that there's a few venues a few promoters who really go out of their way to make you sure you're having a special time but i mean played a show in vienna a little while back and the guy you know his whole mission is to make sure you go to the best restaurant in vienna you can that's amazing and i mean that's I what mean, a mission. the show is almost afterthought like he's like right. oh that's right you gotta play now like, yeah oh, we sorry go. sorry we applied you with wine and it's not it, bad it's dude not it's not bad um before before we hear one more mm-hmm. um epic from you <laughs> uh i want to talk about the archimedes sure um, yeah, yeah, please. and well, actually, that's all I can really say because <laughs> it's so brand new that you're going to have to explain it to... Uh... Absolutely. I mean, I, so here I am making this kind of music and it's at my fingertips, but there is another element of a live performance that, that's going on right now. There's a lot of arguing in the, especially the electronic community, but also just overall music experience is, is a big thing. And the way it visually presents itself is, is tough in electronic music. You generally have one performer or just two people up on stage and they're pumping their fists and you don't really see very much else so you see a lot of people doing laser shows and video mapping it's it's beautiful but it's almost like the performer doesn't need to be there so so thinking about that um myself and these these two gentlemen in the uk came up with a a visual concept that is a wall of moving mirrors and we're calling that archimedes we we toured through brooklyn um at the williamsburg music hall a few months back to super fun but, but basically, yeah, this wall of moving mirrors and you're using video as, as a source of light as well as 
it's content. And because it's mirrors, it happens to throw it back into the room. And so the performer is in, in the best situation is amplified. And it's also a human um, operator on the, on the wall of mirrors. So it is into some pre-programmed movements. It's like somebody actually um, telling the servo motors to where to go. Uh, the, uh, I, the, I'm the, pulling it up because I don't, <laughs> my brain. Oh man. Uh, and the, the video is that um, pre-programmed video or is it capturing the crowd and putting it it's, it's pre-programmed just in the sense, but it's using it more like light sources. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what's po po possible with all these new projectors nowadays, with these like really powerful lumen projectors. You can make a real experience, and it can, it can have all the variation of like a light source or a LED light. But then, you know, it's one of those things, too. It's like, I really, really would encourage people to just go out and experience music. I mean, I know we all have our headphones, we all have our iPods, and it's just, it's really beamed right away into our ear space. But being in a communal situation and experiencing live music is, is really, really what it's about. I mean, that's how at least I was flipped on to really wanting to become Same. musicians because I saw shows that were, you know, people giving their all on stage and that, that was all you could ask for. And, and the affecting music. the crowd and people in a conversation losing their mind. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing, a conversation like the, you know, the audience is as much to do with it as the performer does. I agree. That's I amazing. I, I think uh, that's a good place to, okay. to, well, hold on a second. We need nuts and bolts or Lior <laughs> oh, yeah. would, uh, would slap me around. MySpace, Twitter, Facebook, I'm Friendster. Yeah, no Friendster. more. Yeah, exactly. Lips, MySpace and Friendster, a little less, a little less. Uh, I would say if you want to hear my sound directly, SoundCloud is a great source. So Love SoundCloud. Cannot, it's, it's easily, I actually just uh, ran into Anthony from Hype Machine and we <laughs> sung the praises of SoundCloud. It's, it's great musical discovery right now. It's, you know, it, it'll flip around. It might change again, but SoundCloud for now is a fantastic por portal of music discovery. And my SoundCloud has just happened to be under the name Daedalus. Just in case, uh, if Just people don't see it on the that. website, yeah, it's D A E D E L U S. But um, the one thing I would love about SoundCloud, mm -hmm. and I think it would make it cement its place in history, if it had tour dates on it. You know what? It they're uh, they're so specific in their mission. The the commenting through it doesn't have that yet. But you can go to Songkick. That's a very good website. That actually, I think, was partially based here in New York. But Songkick, or you know, of course, Facebook. My uh, Facebook is being under Daedalus as well, and yeah. Daedalus Music actually on Facebook. So. I think once you start doing like tour dates, it's like, well, then why don't we have photos? And like, it's just like it's just like you're here for the music. The core mission. It's always hard to diverge from the core mission, or else you end right. up with Facebook and how messy that is. Yeah, because that's okay. like I. It's just like once you start adding one thing, yeah. it's like, well, why don't we add? Well, we added that, so yeah. go there for the music. Okay, yeah. that's why I only use Bing. No, I'm just <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna get. <laughs> um, <laughs> A more concise, yeah, I'm just but gonna nonetheless, do... sonic uh, sound journey. Yeah, I'm going to actually start with a song called L.A. Nocturne, which originally appeared on Lior's Friends of Friends Volume 1 compilation, and then we're going to morph from there. But just before, just in case this is the last bit, thank you guys so much for having me on. Thank oh, you so much yeah. for doing this, because it this is something that I feel like needs to be talked about, swirled around, uh, touched and tasted you. more. Uh, thanks. So. And th that is actually it. We're, we're going to take it out on the music. Um, thanks to Mark. Thanks to Phil. Thanks to Bullfrog and Baum, as always. Yeah. And we're 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 out we're out and uh no we're here next week before we go to Thanksgiving spectacular yeah it's Liam Finn is uh playing live oh awesome and let's not forget uh this Thursday Death and Co at Santos Death and De Taxes. Death and Taxes sorry Death and Taxes release party yes we're DJing okay see ya.
kiss all the pretty ones goodbye. Give everyone a penny that cries. You can throw all my tranquil pills away. Let my blood pressure go on its way. Cause kiss all the pretty ones goodbye. Give everyone a penny that cries. You can throw all my tranquil pills away. Let my blood pressure go on its way. Cause my autumn's done come. My autumn's done come. Done come. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.